we visited the site on several occasions and what most impressed me about the site was its beyondness that is there was a there was no view to the west but you knew it because it was at length to the desert it was on literally on the great dividing range so whilst it did pick up on the contour of the blue mountains escarpment its stronger emotive was the great dividing range so it's just sitting on the est- eastern edge of that and there was an, a sort of timeless view toward the knowledge of the ocean so where the megalong really doesn't close down and maintains its openness towards the eastern foreshore but being below that ridge line we wanted to somehow connect back with that direction the design sort of reacts to that sunkenness of the site by lifting itself out of the site as well the other outstanding and memorable characteristic of this site is Janolan Caves which are literally just down the road so wet limestone caves and that was never far out of our mind when we were conceiving the building that is a streaky light grounding connected to the land and openings or vistas to various views and it's often been asked why did we put a curvilinear ceiling along that gallery there were several reasons one reason was to change the light conditions that came in that highlight window and another one which was quite important was so there was no hard line against a moving contour of the land Literally the floor plane of the building follows the site. <clears throat> so the northern end is the living end, kitchen. Then there's a, um, a central bathroom that looks out into the courtyard, an open courtyard with a, a square opening to the sky above the fireplace. So the outside room is very much intended to be the main room of the house. It becomes the archaic connection back to the site where the fire used to be. Then there's a bedroom that opens onto that space directly, so you could almost live just in that area if you chose. Having established the sort of basic premise for the building or the building plan or the building footprint, there was then always the question of how do you get light, sunlight into that. And we came up with the idea of vertical boxes that if they came up at different heights, you'd be able to layer the sun in at different, different levels into the building. But it would always also change the scale of the room below. You'd, you'd be able to use a fan and blow the heat from those things, from those boxes down into the room, or have ventilation on the side and extract the heat. There's an incredible sort of um, sharp white light that happens on this site. And due to the big eaves on the building, that's quietened down significantly at the lower level. So at the upper level, with minimal eave protection, the light penetrates the room quite prophetically.
What happens, of course, in the upper bedrooms is they tend to float above the building. And because you descend down upon this building, we put those boxes in a body, a flat plane of water, so that as you descend, you see the sculptural line of the hills beyond as the profile of the boxes or the silhouette of the boxes. And then they appear to connect you both vertically and horizontally with the site, while the platform below that they sit into becomes the footprint or the foot on the side. There was always an intention for this building to be timeless or ageless in a sense, so you weren't sure when you arrived whether it was a hundred years old or, or a building of the future. But in doing that, we never lose sight of the activities of occupation, the activity of lighting a fire, the activity of bathing, the activity of cooking food. It's those activities which we feel bring life. It's very much an accumulation of thinking, this building. The memory that I think stays with me most of all is the unencumbered freedom of this house. And freedom not in a way where you roam around unprovoked by the building, but freedom to think without domination. It is that freedom which is fundamental to a human being. Thank you.